Are you familiar with the Michelle Carter case? If you're not, she's currently serving a two and a half year sentence for involuntary manslaughter after her then boyfriend committed suicide after Carter sent several text messages encouraging him to do so. The case made national headlines back in 2014 and this week HBO released a documentary on the case called I Love You Now Die. Now the question is being raised if Carter should be held responsible for the death of her boyfriend considering she didn't physically do anything, did she? Very bizarre story, but for some insight, we welcome in Frederick M. Lawrence, distinguished lecturer at Georgetown Law Center and former president of Brandeis University. Why, why was she convicted? I, I mean, what, what did she do? She used words in a way that encouraged and facilitated the technical word we use as she was complicit. She aided and abetted in the crime. The crime is suicide. Right. Which is against the law. But, but, but people make statements a lot of times. Correct. Not different, not, well, maybe it's different from here, but drop dead. Wish you were dead. Right. And so what the jury would be asked to do here, or in this case, actually, it was a judge who sat in place of the jury, is to determine the intent that she had. What did she have in mind when she did this? Can you always tell intent? No, it's a complicated issue, but that's why proof beyond a reasonable doubt. If the trier of fact believes beyond a reasonable doubt what she is trying to do, is to aid and abet him in committing suicide. Yeah. Then the fact is just words doesn't mean it can't be a crime. Right, it was intent here. Okay, um, the First Amendment does, doesn't protect all speech. First Amendment does not protect all speech. Words alone in certain contexts can be criminal. Obviously, when it's words alone, we want to be very careful because we do protect speech. We want big protection around speech, but words alone can be a threat. Words alone can be uh, com uh, complicity in a crime. Words alone can be duress. Words alone can be a conspiracy. So, if, I mean, I could, you and I could just have a conversation about how you're going to blow up a bridge. You go up and blow up the bridge, I'm part of a conspiracy to blow up that bridge. Right. So, again, it's about intent. It's up to a judge and jury to it's decide. It's about the judge and jury. And, and before that, the prosecutor. Well, prosecutor's got to decide what he thinks he has here. And I think this really should be situated in a broader context of a heightened concern about bullying. Uh, she wasn't bullying him exactly, but this idea of how young people are influencing each other for ill is something that the criminal law has to pay attention to. You don't want to turn everything into a criminal law case, but you know, Bruce, the worst fact in this case, this young man is in the car, he's got the monoxide going, he gets out of the car because he's got second thoughts, he calls her up, and she says, get back in the car. So now, That's a bad thing. Uh, so, so, so what was decided here is that while he might have changed his mind, not sure he wants to do this, she hadn't changed her mind. She wanted him to kill himself. That, that's, that's the conclusion the, here. That, that's, what the, that's what the judge must have I, I want to go back to, to one more thing and ask a sure. question here in terms of bullying young people. They say a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff that goes on social media. What about some of this jargon, some of this hateful stuff that goes on so, social I media? I think one of the advantages of having a beyond a reasonable doubt standard is that when in doubt, we're going to err in favor of acquittals, and we should. You've got to prove at a very high level what this intent was, but where you do, then you've got a crime. Right. First Amendment does not protect all First speech on, on, on social media. Uh, speech, uh, social media, and the fact that, it, that she wasn't physically present today makes no difference. This right. case would be the exact same thing if she's standing outside the car. He gets out of the car and says, I got second thoughts, and she says, you get back in the car. She did that. I got you. But she did it virtually. Okay. Today, that's the same thing. Thanks, Larry. I really appreciate it. It's always good talking to you. Frederick Lawrence from the Georgetown uh, University Law School.